Hey everyone, welcome to our online experience here at North Point. My name is Trey and I'm a part of the team here and just wanted to say thank you for being a part of this online community. Now, whether this is your first time or if you've been with us for a while, we just want to not only welcome you, but we have a chat feature that whether you're on Facebook, YouTube, or our online.church platform that we'd love for you to maybe just drop your name, uh, who you are, and maybe a little bit about you. Uh, we'd love to connect with you there. Uh, even if you have a prayer request, we'd love to hear about it there. So uh, let us know in the chat a little bit more about you. We'd love to connect. Now today, uh, we have a few things happening. Uh, we're going to be jumping into worship in a second, so we'll be singing some praises to God. Uh, so we're going to try to have lyrics in the chat for you, but uh, we'd love to be able to worship with you. And uh, into uh, following that, we're going to have uh, a message and uh, we're also celebrating baptisms today to where people have not only said yes to uh, Jesus, but they are going to publicly declare their faith through water baptism. So we're going to be celebrating that today. And while you're online, we're uh, hoping that we get to celebrate that with you. Uh, so uh, as you get to join in with us, you get to see and be a part of that celebration. Now, uh, like I said, we're going to have that message. And then following the message, we're going to have some next steps for you. Uh, we'll have some links in the chat for you to uh, have uh, a next step to whether you are new to your faith or uh, you're in that discovery phase of finding and following Jesus. We'd love to connect with you in those steps. So uh, that's all uh, we have right now. Worship's about to happen. We'll see you in the chat. Welcome to North Point. You stand with us. We're going to worship together. I tried to hide you, steal you away. And death tried to keep you inside of the grave. The enemy fought you, he tried, but he lost. You cannot. Stop. When we cry, when we cry for freedom, you tore out the walls. The weight of our burdens, you carried it all. Our fears, our fears and our fears. Hey. 
Well, I know that some of us have experienced that, a God that can't be stopped. Uh, I was talking to somebody just uh, last night who, who had told me the last place I ever expected to spend my weekend was at a church, <laughs> but I had a God that got a hold of my life. And I know for some of us, we've experienced that. For others of us, maybe you haven't experienced that, but you hope it's true. You hope there's a God that loves you. You hope there's a God that's fighting for you. You hope that there's something that can make you whole because maybe you don't feel very whole right now. Well, I wanna let you know, you picked a great week to be here because uh, a little bit later in service, we're gonna be celebrating story after story after story of people going public with their faith in baptisms. So it is going to be an incredible day. I hope it's gonna be so helpful for you. And uh, it's just, it's unique. So one, you didn't miss worship. We got more worship at the end. Two, we don't, I guess we don't usually have a tub on stage. I guess usually we do, but it's just not open to the public. But today it is uh, with those going public. But what I wanna do is I wanna have you, you guys can have a seat. And while I do that, I wanna invite out one of my buddies, Tyler. Tyler, if you come on out. Uh, Tyler, this tall drink of water. Okay, you've probably seen him around North Point. He's involved in uh, lots of different areas from young adults to worship. Um, but here we go. Tyler, uh, Tyler got baptized at North Point not too long ago. And I wanna just pick your brain because I think that your story is probably similar to maybe some other stories out here. And so one, um, what made you ready to make that decision to get baptized? You're like, hey, I, I think I'm right. Yeah, so um, I realized it was time for me to make that decision because I came to the realization that I had waited 10 years to do it. <laughs> um, I, I grew up in a Christian home and when I started to really take my faith seriously, there was always this like social anxiety surrounded like, oh, going up there in front of people, getting in the pool, uh, you know, it was kind of weird. But as time went on too, it kind of became a pride thing. I was like, man, what are people gonna think of my faith if I'm just now finally doing this, right? And so I put it off. And then I ended up going through one of the hardest periods of my life that lasted like three years. And it, it got to the point that it felt like it was never gonna end. I just figured, all right, this is life from here on out, incredibly discouraging. but. I came to the realization that God is not slack on his promises. Uh, his love is never ending and he got me through. And I came to that point where I was like, I gotta take the next step when I was in a young adult service and Max, uh, Will, Will Maxwell was speaking up here. And he said, I don't care if you're a new believer or if you've been a believer for years, this is for you. And I remember thinking, ah, all right, he's, he's talking to me here. This is me, he's talking about. So we made the decision that day. I love that. And then what was the experience like? So you're like, okay, I'm making this decision. And then the day came. And you're like, okay, now I actually have to actually make this decision. What was it, that like? It was weird. It was, it was it, in the best way possible, it was weird. I was at a loss for words the week before. Like I couldn't put into words what God was doing in my life. And it was just so crazy to think that God was finally calling me out of that period of life. So when the day came, I was super excited to step into that pool. I almost slipped on the way in. And Will would be like, dude, chill out. You're fine. Like, hang on a second, right? Um, I was submerged, came up, wave of emotions, and just proceeded to walk out that door and just sob in the hallway right there. It was incredible. Okay, so you made the decision, you got baptized, and then after you got baptized, was your life like perfect after that? Just like no problems, no, no you're just like everything is amazing. No, no, I still had to go to the work the next morning. Oh, okay. Um, okay. I had to do that. Um, but at the same time though, like things were different. Like I was doing the same stuff, but I had been given a new lens. There's new ways to think about things, like new ways to th see things, that the mission had always been before me that God has given to all of us, right? Those of us that call him Lord. And I was finally looking closer. God had given me those eyes. And so it, it just made, I don't know, it gave it a scale of things that what we do has an impact. And so you just started looking closer at things. That's what I was doing. So yeah, I just started trying to live out the day as Christ would. Okay, and I lied. I know I said that was my last question, but one more question. Do you remember the date you got baptized? October 30th, 2022. I, I love it. Hey, it's a monumental moment. And here's, here's what I think. I have a hunch that there's some people here today that May 7th, 2023 is going to be a day that they do not forget. For some of you, maybe you've marked that on your calendar and you know, this is the day I'm getting baptized. I, I, it's happening, today is the day. Maybe for others of you, you showed up and this is just kind of an insignificant Sunday, but I gotta be honest, and maybe God knows this is going to be a significant Sunday for you, where it's a decision, you're like, I don't, I don't know, I, maybe this is, I've been holding on for this for 10 years, no, but I wanna tell you this, we're ready for you. And there is something amazing happens when you're just obedient and you're like, okay, I'm, I'm open. And so today, here's what I want, for the next hour, 
And we can just lean in. Let's lean into this message. Let's lean into the lyrics. Let's lean into maybe what God might be speaking to us. It may not be audibly. It may just be a hunch, um, but lean in on that. And I promise you, uh, maybe circumstances may not look different, but I think something's gonna be different from within, within you. And I know that there might be a next step that some of us are gonna take, but hey, we're in this series, it's called Backward. It's these things that maybe don't make sense to us logically, but are gonna propel us forward spiritually. And I think it's a great weekend to celebrate baptisms as we do that because it may seem weird to you, but I think today is gonna be so helpful for you. And so uh, I know we got a, a video and then we're gonna hear from Jeremy. So let's check it out. Well, welcome to North Point. Good to have you with us today, and we want to welcome each of our campuses. We had a power surge earlier today, and it didn't even phase uh, the campuses. So uh, I don't know whether to blame uh, those who work in technology here for the surge or to thank them for navigating it so well. But uh, they're awesome, and we're good to, glad to have all of our campuses with us. And I got Brad Fox here. Would you welcome Brad Fox? Does that feel welcoming? Oh, I feel uh, very welcome. Brad's our development director. He was a campus pastor uh, for about nine years uh, at our Nixa campus. Been working in development with all campuses uh, here uh, in the last year or so. But we've got a big event. I thought, yeah, I know you're working on it, but I think everybody else wants to hear about it. Tell us what's coming up for in sure. June. For sure. How many of y'all like golf? Woo! All right. How many of you like taking right. a nap to golf? It's like watching golf on a Sunday afternoon. So... Hey, uh, how many of you love the Dream Center? Yes. Okay, thank you. Right answer. So, hey, we are having uh, the first annual Dream Center Golf Classic uh, coming up June 24th at Rivercut Golf Course uh, right here in Springfield, Missouri. Uh, 8 a.m. start. All the proceeds that we raise that day are going to the Springfield Dream Center, which is something that we obviously all love by the, the sound of the applause. And by the one person that said they love golf, we expect you to sign up a team. That's going to be awesome. So... Uh, there, there's team sponsorships. Also, there's uh, corporate sponsorships. So maybe you hate golf and you're trying to eliminate it from the world. Uh, we could do that by uh, having you uh, contribute with uh, one of the different corporate sp uh, sponsorship levels. And it's easy to sign up. Yeah, you just go to this Epcot Center ball right there and uh, <laughs> you, you sign up so right there. Epcot. So, yeah. So I see all these phones out right now and yeah. zooming in. Thank you for doing that. And uh, you can sign up there or on our website or on our app. Yeah, you can do so, it all three ways. So whether you want to golf, whether you want to get a team together in golf, whether you want to be a sponsor, um, you said it all helps the Dream Center. It does. Very good. And here's the chance. Maybe you only have two other friends. And so there's three of you. It's like it's a four-man scramble. What do I do? We, we thought of that because I know many of you, I see you walking around like they have two friends. They need one more. Jeremy Johnson is available. Because uh, I have zero the, friends. Well, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm looking for three. Didn't say that out loud. Uh, you could bid, and we received a, a, a bid. I bid first you know, last week, and nobody outbid me until this morning. I, I think it's $100 right now. You could get Jeremy on your team. Wow, 100 so, bucks? <laughs> Come on. I, I mean, I didn't want to say it out loud. It's I will like, honestly personally add 22 uh, strokes to their score. Exactly. So here's the deal. <laughs> It's not going to be like you're, uh, you're bringing in Tiger Woods, maybe, maybe later in his life, Tiger Woods, but he, it's the most enjoyable round, just getting to ride in a golf cart and hear him talk and a visit with people the whole time, so he'll give you a couple good shots. I feel like you're making fun of me, but that's all right. <laughs> For the Dream Center, I'll take it. For the Dream Center, I'll yeah, take great it. Great personality. So. Thank you. June 24th, Rivercut, sign up, app, website. Thank you, Brad. All right. Awesome. Thank you. 
Awesome, 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 awesome. Hey, we love the Dream Center. We love partnering uh, because we believe that all those programs are impacting uh, real lives, real families, and we're so uh, proud of who they are and what they're doing here in our area. And this week we saw, uh, I think there were like, I don't know, over a couple dozen, maybe close to 30 different projects, give back projects that North Pointers were doing, involved with all weekend, last several days long. Uh, so you are all in bite-sized projects, whether it was groups of four or 20 people or whatever it might be. But uh, that many projects with partnership organizations that we really feel like are making a great um, impact in our area and we're thrilled to be able to partner with them. So it's very important, whether it's Dream Center, other organizations that we put together or things that you're doing with your own influence, it's very important that we do things that aren't for us, but that we, we use our gifts through us to be able to uh, impact those around us. And, and I believe what we do outside these walls is more important than what we talk about inside these walls. Not that what we talk about isn't important, but that what we do with it is proof that it means something to us. So, hey, uh, we've been in this series, we're wrapping it up today, called Backwards, talking about principles of Jesus, sayings of Jesus, expressions and examples of Jesus that kind of go against conventional wisdom, but we really believe that will help drive us forward in our faith. And so today, <laughs> Today, we're gonna to talk about vulnerability. And sometimes uh, God, in God's way, um, will give me an opportunity to experience what I'm about to preach. Isn't that awesome? Um, he didn't do that um, uh, in all the weeks, but this week on vulnerability, I didn't even see it coming. It was just a little God wink. God gave me an example to, to learn about vulnerability. It's because I had an appointment set by my doctor for a colonoscopy. Now, I don't want you to judge my age right now because you're like, there's no way he's that old. No, they've backed up the, the age rec recommendations, okay? So I realize I'm a little older, but I'm not, I don't like to think of it like I'm old enough to be your dad. I like to think of it like I'm old enough to be your fun uncle, okay? So um, anyway, um, I'm not super familiar with the, the uh, topic, but I, I was aware of um, the focus of their concentration on that exam. And so I was like, ah, not looking forward to it. Um, so the day comes, I had gone like a day without eating and all that kind of stuff. And so I'm like, let's just get this over with. This is gonna be like the worst day of my week, maybe my month. And um, so we're there and they wheel me down. And, and well, before they wheel me down, I'm in the room and, and Leanne's kind of like trying to motivate me. And they give me that, that outfit to wear, you, you know, the outfit in the hospital that they give you to wear. Um, the one that's like a superhero robe, but you wear it backwards because if you wear it forwards, they arrest you, right? Like it's, it's the backwards robe. And, and it's, I, I call it the hospital robe or the ICU robe because um, you either wear it in the ICU or when you're wearing it, the person behind says, I see you, okay? Because it's, anyway. So a vulnerable, vulnerable, vulnerable outfit. So I'm sitting there thinking, oh, I'm a pastor, okay? And I'm a pastor wearing a robe that doesn't quite latch in the back. And like, this is so just awkward, like, you know, just, um, so then it's, it's time for them to wheel me down to the exam room. And uh, so, so they wheel me down there and they get me hooked up and, and I'm about to not remember anything that happens, but I'm not there yet. They hadn't started that part of the procedure. And so I'm just there. And um, so I've got the, uh, the person who's assisting and the doctor. And, and, and with vulnerability, I mean, there's not many more vulnerable opportunities than to have one of these procedures. And so I'm there and the person behind me is getting ready uh, to start the examination on my caboose and, um, and uh, make it small talk, which I'm thinking, we don't need to do this, okay? This isn't important. And the one of the, honestly, the last thing I remember before I forgot everything else um, was this assistant say, hey, I've actually never had a chance to meet you, Pastor Jeremy. I'm a North Pointer. <laughs> and um, I don't know if you're here today because I don't rest, recognize you when you're not wearing your work clothes. And I don't know if you recognize me when I'm wearing clothes, but um, thank you for that. I did write down two very important learnings from that moment. Number one is this, if you're a North Pointer and you're in the exam room, 
please don't tell me. Okay, that's just a, a foundational rule going forward. Second thing is this, if you wanna pursue health, you've got to risk vulnerability. Now we've all had our own version of a time where when it was in the physical realm, where we, the doctor said, hey, I, I see something, I think you need to, I think we need to run a test. And, and the last thing you wanna do is run a test. You're like, I don't, I don't wanna do that. I, be, you know, I, I don't wanna, I don't wanna have that, that, that that, that screening or that exam, maybe because of the finances connected to it. You're like, I, I, I'd rather not know because I'm not prepared for the price of that. Or I'd rather not know because I'm not prepared for the mental status of what if, what if that's positive, which is negative, right? Um, or maybe for you, it's just awkward. You're like, I'd rather not go in because it's vulnerable. And we've all had that physically. Uh, many of us know what that's like financially is you get the, the envelope in the mail and you know it's a bill, but you're like, if I don't see it, it can't see me, I won't open it, and you just stack it on the table, right? And you know that you should open it, but you're like, ah, when I open it, there's this, it feels a lot more vulnerable. Maybe it's relational, is, is you know that there's something wrong in that relationship and you kind of want to address it, but you're afraid to address it because if you address it, what if it makes everything awkward and you'd rather pretend everything's all right than deal with the thing in case it's not? And maybe for you, it's spiritually. It's you're like, I'm all right, I'm fine. I hope God grades on a curve, right? Um, and, and you're like, I, I, don't, I don't know if I really want to pursue a relationship with God um, and, and if God says, hey, I want you to examine this area of your life, you're like selectively teachable in that area, you're like, that would require vulnerability. What would it be like if we let Jesus be our model and we didn't try and project an image, but we were vulnerable? A couple of things in our outline, and I have it on our North Point Mo app. Um, and if you wanna follow along with the outline, North Point, make sure you put Mo. Uh, on, on the app search. Um, but the first thing that I put in my notes is our natural tendency is, project, is to project an image. That's our tendency. We project an image. Um, a lot of you thought about that and spent some time on that today. You're like, okay, um, I'm going out in public. Um, some of you are like, I never struggle with that, okay? Uh, yeah, we should probably struggle a little, maybe brush your teeth, okay? It's like, you know what I'm saying? Is, is there's, there's a healthy zone somewhere between I don't care what people think and I care too much what people think. But our natural tendency is to project an, project an image. Um, I believe uh, these things, <laughs> these things are interesting. You got a smartphone, anybody have a smartphone? Uh, you realize that, you know, smartphones is an ironic name for them, okay? Um, because these things, I believe in 2000 years if the earth is still doing earth things, right? Um, and and it's, this planet's still cranking in 2000 years and there's archeologists and they do this dig and the archeologist is like, they dig one of these things up they would be like, oh my word, we've read about it. We found it. This is the beginning of the end for civilization. This is where they really went to pot, okay? When they had the ability to post to the world what they ate for dinner, this is when they really became dumb. And, and, and I think this would be a fascinating tool in the lens of history one day because this has changed everything. This has allowed us to project, to manage, and even to manipulate an image. We can tell you what we want to tell you about ourselves. We have our our profiles and we can post something and we can live in anxiety for 17 minutes while we count how many people double tap our, our post. And, and we can get irritated based on what we manage and what you think of what we manage. This makes us focus on our image if we're not careful. Sometimes that's uh, leaked its way into the dating world. Like, I don't know if you've dated recently, but it's different than when our grandparents dated. They used to have to talk, okay? They'd have to go out and see other human beings, maybe like go to the soda shop, maybe go to the sock hop, maybe have to get the guts to introduce themselves, maybe open a car door, all types of weird things that people used to do when they would date. Nowadays, what you have to do is be good at projecting an image. 
You put together your profile, you get the right filter on it, you swing by Vandevort bathrooms, so you get the best lighting for it. Um, and, and, and then you got this profile, you put all your, and so what happens is now I'm gonna put this image out there and then everyone who's interested in dating is gonna say, okay, oh, they're, gonna, they're gonna have like 15 seconds to decide if they wanna spend the next 30 years with you on Saturdays at TJ Maxx and Target, okay? That's a tough, tough task. And so if they don't like it, swipe left. If they do like it, swipe right. Um, you know, and, and it's all about image. It's all about image. And you have no idea. And then and if you do go out on a date with them, you're thinking, are they, the real, are they really like the person that they put on their image? It, because why? We live in a culture that's all about the image. And, and you know, it, even though that we're, we're doing this now 2,000 years after uh, Jesus walked on earth, his, his culture was like that too. The Roman Empire was all about being gaudy and impressive and powerful and, and uh, Caesar's image was everywhere and, and the Roman officials had, had their own ways to, to, to show their power and um, importance. And even the religious Jewish subculture in the Roman Empire did the same thing. Jesus talked about it. He says, you guys, all you religious people have your flowing robes and your dazzling bedazzling dazzled tassels, and, and you're trying to project an image that you are more spiritual than you are, that you're more important than those around you. And God says that you're like polished coffins. That's what God thinks of you in your image projected culture, because it's more than an image, you have an identity. And I would say this is my second thought as we go into some scripture today, that God invites us uh, to discover our identity. In a world that tells us to project our culture, God invites us to discover our identity. Uh, here, here's what we have. We have, and I, an image is what I tell you I am. A reputation is what you tell me I am. An identity is what God tells me I am. Do you know you were created on purpose, for purpose, with purpose? And you're not gonna discover that based on your reputation. And you're not gonna discover that based on you putting something out there. You discover that from a voice from heaven. Now, I've never heard an audible voice. But you discover that from inviting God. God, if you're real, would you give me a sense of purpose? Would you give me a relationship that drives me forward? And that's a backwards principle. It requires vulnerability to say, I'm not gonna take my cues about me from those around me. I'm gonna take the cues about me from the one who created me. And even if it doesn't match what I've been trying to put out there, even if it doesn't match what everyone else says they see in me, I'm gonna take my cues about me from the one who created me. That requires vulnerability, because what if other people don't like it? What if other people reject it? What if other people say, I don't see in you what you say that God sees in you? That's vulnerability. But that's what it requires. That's what God models. Think about this for a second. God had this idea to send Jesus, his son, into earth. I, I wasn't there for that creative meeting. Um, but in my mind, if I were invited, I'd have had a lot of great ideas. Like one would be like, how about let's, let's punt this idea. Because think about the angels. When, when God rolled out that plan, say, hey, we're gonna send Jesus down to earth. I bet some of the angels were like, hey, God, you've been batting a thousand so far. Um, really good streak you're on, but I think this might be your first bad idea. <laughs> because we've been watching earthlings for quite some time, and they seem to be fairly consistent in their pattern. They're not trustworthy. <laughs> they will leverage their power, they will abuse, they will hurt, they will destroy, they will kill. And while I think it's very compassionate of you to want to send your son to earth, I fear that this might end well for your son. And when God says, no, nah, I'm going to do it anyway, I would imagine in the creative meeting, they said, well, okay, if you're going to send God's son to earth, what if, you, um, what if you send him in a chariot of fire? What if you have all the angels with their golden trumpets blow their trumpets and, 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 and then all of the earthlings would know this is the son of the gods? And God says, no, I got a different idea. I'm going to take this son, this God, and I'm going to put my son, I'm going to put him wrapped in the skin of a baby. You know what we call that? Vulnerable. Jesus, placed in the hands of humans. Vulnerable. 
If I were the angels, I'd have said that's a terrible idea. At least give him all the power. That way, if the, the humans try and hurt him, he can like shoot fire from his eyes. He can do something like that, right? Jesus modeled vulnerability, loving us even though we might hurt him, loving us even though many times we'll reject him. That's the foundation of relationship. So I wanna look at what it says in Philippians chapter two. It says this about Jesus' grand entrance. It says, in your relationships with another, have this same mindset as Jesus, which that's a tough standard, who being in the very nature of God didn't consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. It's called the great kenosis is the theological word, that God would empty himself of all the supernatural uh, uh, privileges and he would be clothed in humanity. And being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Think about Jesus. Jesus showed up on this planet. He was born vulnerable to a single mom who was engaged to a confused dad in a world that did not recognize him. Babies are vulnerable. I can't imagine a more vulnerable creation, right? Like when Leanne and I had our first one, good grief, I can't believe they let us take her home. Like we didn't have to have a license or nothing. They gave us this little oompa loompa, right? Like wrapped up and we're like, what do we, I don't know what to do. How am I going to? And, and, and we're, we were like, I remember the first few nights we had the monitor, not the video monitor. I already told you I'm old enough to have colonoscopies. Okay, uh, this was back in the day, it was just audio monitors, right? And, and we're like listening to this thing because we're like, they're so vulnerable. God's son was a baby. Naked, exposed to a cruel earth. Fast forward 33 years on a cross. God's son vulnerable, naked and exposed to a cruel earth. God let the foundation of his relationship with you be vulnerability. And our invitation is to be vulnerable with him. To say, God, I'm willing to walk into some uncomfortable areas of my life and let you meet me there. And the result of that is growth. Let me define something uh, really quickly, a few things for us today. Um, and then I wanna talk about his baptism and then we're gonna end with baptisms. A few definitions that Noah Webster might disagree with me, but these are Jeremy Johnson's definitions for today. At the end of the day, we'll go back to Noah. Okay, but here we go. Um, disappointment for today's purposes, let's define it as when what I've done isn't enough. Disappointment. <laughs> I, how many of you have been disappointed in something you've done, right? How many have been disappointed in something that the person next to you is, no, don't, okay, don't, don't, no, don't, 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 start fights in church. Okay, here's, here's the deal, is we've all been disappointed in what we've done, we've all been disappointed in others. Disappointment, I want us to think about it this way. Disappointment in what I've done, okay? Like when I'm in seventh grade, I'm learning how to mow the lawn, I'm proud of my work and I get done, and my parents say, the lines aren't straight. They're disappointed in what I'm done. Ah, bummer, right? is I'm awesome at t-ball, but then I never learned how to hit a curve, okay? Disappointment. Is I got a C minus in geometry and my parents told me to get an a, a or a B. Disappointment in what I've done. Um, but that's not rejection. Rejection is when, re disappointment is when what I've done isn't enough. Rejection is when who I am isn't enough. Disappointment is man, I failed. Rejection is man, I'm a failure. You need to understand the difference because some of you have been modeled rejection from others and often it's the modeling from others is what we translate as our relationship with God. And you need to understand God is different. God is the God of vulnerability. God is the God of, he'll, he'll give you the knife and tell you where to hurt him the most and give it to you again and give it to you again and give it to you again. He will lay down his life for you and he will never reject you even though you you have disappointed others, you've disappointed yourself, and, and you've failed at things. You are not a failure. He will never reject you because he doesn't identify you based on what you've done. He identifies you as his kid. He loves you. He's wild about you. 
And some of us, we don't understand that intimacy, and I'm gonna attribute this to a friend of mine, Jake Smith. Some of you know him. Jake led a group, uh, a bunch of North Pointers a couple of years ago. I don't know if he invented this, but to me, he, he's the one that gets the statue for this quote. Um, uh, is The definition of intimacy is into me, see, right? That's how you can remember what intimacy is, into me, see? And God sees into you, and he still loves you. God sees your biggest temptation, your, your, your most ugly hatred. God sees your most, um, most scary feature. He sees into you, he inspects you, he examines you, and he still loves you, he's wild about you. That's God, he doesn't reject you. He invites you into relationship even in those moments. So that's what we see God model for us. What we need to understand is there's no image I need to project for God. God has an identity for me and my identity is not based on what I've done for him. My identity is not based on my perfection and my sinless life. My identity is I'm a child of God. And all the sin that has happened to me and all the sin that I have contributed to my life and my world that has missed the mark, yeah, that sin is disappointing. That sin misses the mark. That sin sells God's best plan short in my life and impacts everybody else's. But it doesn't change my identity. You are not what you did. You were born with purpose, on purpose, for purpose. And today is the day God invites you into that new life that new identity he has for you. So vulnerability then is having the strength to show God my weakness. Saying, God, here's my weakness and this backwards principle in scripture is in my weakness he is made strong. Vulnerability is saying, God, what I have in front of me today, <laughs> I don't think I got what it takes. And in my weakness, he says, you were never expected to, but my strength is perfect. And my strength is for you today to live out the purpose I have for you in every day. It's, it's an awareness of my weakness and an invitation of his strength. And that's how I live out my identity. And maybe you're like, yeah, but I can't because I've tried that before. I've made that confession before. I'm disappointed. You're not rejected. Your step, bold step of vulnerability today is what changes everything. Uh, one more thing, and then, then I, want, I want to read Matthew. It says this, um, if I live for others' approval, I'll die from others' rejection. If my life goal is to get approval from others, I'm gonna die from their rejection. Living for someone's approval is not worth living your life. There's something more beautiful. Living from approval of God. What do you have to do to be approved by God? Be born, that's it. <laughs> you were born with God's approval and he's inviting you into the purpose that he's already approved in his life and for your life. So Jesus, 30 years, he hadn't done one miracle. He hadn't healed one uh, blind eye. He hadn't opened one deaf ear. He hadn't raised one dead person. He hadn't multiplied any Lambert's rolls. He hadn't done any of that cool stuff yet. He shows up at his baptism, and it says this in Matthew chapter three. It says, Jesus emerged from his water baptism because when Jesus, he believes in baptism because it's a profession, it's a proclamation, it's, it's, a, it's a declaration of my identity that I'm connected with God. So when he came out of the water, it says, heaven was opened and Jesus saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and coming upon him alighting on his very body, and the voice of heaven says, this is my son whom I love, this is the apple of my eye, with him I'm very pleased. Jesus coming out of the water, and all of a sudden all of heaven opens up, that's my boy! Woo, Jesus! Woo-hoo-hoo! -hoo! And I imagine Jesus with a smirk of a seventh grader at a JV basketball game, you're like, Dad, stop it, but do it a little bit more. Dad, stop it. That's my boy! I love you, I love you, I love you! God couldn't shut up because he's allowed in his approval. Why did God say it out loud? Maybe everybody else needed to hear it. They're like, oh, it's God's son, cool. Maybe Jesus needed to hear it. I'm living from approval, not for approval. 
I don't need to be their king. They're gonna want me to be their king. I'm not living for their approval. I'm living from approval. I don't need to just do everything they want me to do, multiply everything they want me to multiply. I'm living from approval, not for approval. Jesus was about ready to walk into the desert where he'd be tempted for 40 days by the devil. I'm living from approval, not for approval. When the devil says, if you do this, then you'll be this. I'm living from approval, not for approval. From approval, not for approval. When he's tempted, I'm living from approval, not for approval. From approval, not for approval. Jesus was able to go and experience the hardest season of his ministry fresh off a very vocal reminder of God's approval. And if Jesus needed that, how much more do you and I need that? That we aren't rejected, we aren't distanced because of our sin, that even though that sin has the ability to separate us from God's best in relationship with God, God's already paid the price for that. We need to personalize it. So here's what I wanna do. We're gonna celebrate water baptisms. And in a second, we're gonna help all of heaven by yelling our approval at the campuses. And for those who have signed up, we have people sign up at all of our campuses to get baptized. For those of you who have already signed up, I'm gonna go ahead and release you to go to your, wherever they told you to go. Okay, it's probably a lobby or a hallway and uh, probably not a parking lot. Okay, <laughs> lobby, hallway. If you already signed up, you can head that way and uh, prepare for baptism. And uh, I also want to invite our worship teams to come forward as, as, as we, we're going to close in worship together as we celebrate water baptisms. One by one, we're going to invite people into the tank or the trough. And based on their confession of faith, we're going to connect the dots between Jesus' death and resurrection and our spiritual death and spiritual life. Just as Jesus was buried and raised to the, from the dead, in the same way, we identify with him. We go under the water, dead to our old way of life and risen to new life. Baptism doesn't make you a Christian. It just makes you wet, okay? But here's what baptism is. It's a statement that you've already made that decision. It's saying, Jesus, my approval comes from you. Why is it a big deal? Well, one, Jesus modeled it and Jesus instructed us to do it. But even more important than that, it's a moment for you to capture symbolically the approval of God. I don't wanna walk into school searching and hungry for approval. I don't wanna walk into dating life hungry for approval. I don't wanna walk into the boardroom hungry for approval. I wanna live from approval. And every day that brave step of vulnerable obedience to say, God, meet me in my weakness. Two, two last things and, and then I wanna wrap it up is, is this. It's hard to be confident where I am if I'm not confident in whom I am. It's hard to be confident where I am if I'm not confident who I am. If you're not confident that you are wildly loved by God, uh, that's gonna be a challenge. It's gonna be a challenge in every arena. But when you're confident in who you are, a child of God that God can't shut up, he's the annoying dude in the bleachers for you, then you can be confident wherever you go. I don't need your approval, I've got his. And God's commitment to me is that I can be fully known and never alone. What about that one part of me? God, you see the wicked ways inside of me? Will you still be with me? Yes. That vulnerable relationship provides intimacy. How powerful would that have been had some of your parents had those kind of godly relationships in their life before things went crazy? The kind of people who said, I see what you're struggling with. Let me give you some encouragement, some support, some acceptance, some other options. What would that look like for you in seventh grade if you went back in time and you didn't need to waste X amount of years spinning for approval? <sighs> Today's the day we walk in that. So here's what I wanna challenge you to do. Let your relationship with God not be tainted 
because of the poor examples around you, but know that God desires vulnerable relationship. He's gonna ask you to take awkward steps of obedience and he will meet you every step, whether it's in generosity, whether it's in forgiveness, whether it's in patience, whether it's in vulnerability. That's how it works. It's backwards, but it drives you forwards. Maybe today you need to personalize your relationship with Jesus. There's nothing you need to do to pay the price. He already paid it. He died for us, rose again. All you have to do is personalize it. Just personalize it. What does that look like right now saying, Jesus, I believe you created me on purpose, for purpose, with purpose. Today, forgive me of the sin. <laughs> it's kept me off track. Today, I personalize that forgiveness you've offered. From this day forward, I wanna live in relationship with you. That's all you need to do today. Maybe for you, you've made that personal and you've never gone public in water baptism. I bet it's a really uncomfortable, awkward moment right now where he's saying, today's your day. And you're like, I don't think today's my day. I didn't invite my grandma. Um, I got my hair did. This is not my day. I'm not wearing clothes for, well, I hope you are. Okay, but that's not what I mean. I mean like baptism clothes. Uh, we've got everything for you. We've got shirts, we've got shorts, we've got towels. They still smell like Walmart. They're awesome, right? We've got everything for you in the lobby because we know when we throw out this opportunity, God's gonna speak to some of you that you've never done this and you know you need to because you wanna make a proclamation of your identity. So in just a moment, I'm gonna invite you to do something you don't want me to do. And that's to challenge you to step out if God's putting that on your heart, get to the lobby, grab some stuff, quickly change and get in line and get baptized. Or go crazy like and just jump in the tub with what you're wearing and <laughs> you know, it's warm outside, right? It's already humid in here. Um, but don't miss this opportunity because it's awkward. That's what produces a blessing is when we take obedience to challenging steps. So let me pray with you. Would you stand with me if you're able to? This is a cool moment right now. It's a holy moment because God's gonna speak to us and we have a chance to reject him or to walk in that way. So let's do it. Father, today, I pray for those who for the very first time are saying, Jesus, forgive me of sin. I want a relationship with you that right now you would just forgive them, wipe it clean and give them that transformation. But I also pray for those who have made that their prayer, maybe even before today, but they've never gone public in water baptism. I pray right now you would speak so uncomfortably it's tough to shake and that we would muster up the courage to meet you in our area of vulnerability, take the next step of obedience and join the line of celebration today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, church, if you're ready to take that awkward step, if you know that's your next step, we're ready for you. You can make your way to the lobby at every one of our campuses, grab some stuff, get in line, and let's not miss this moment. And let's worship today together. All of our campuses, they're gonna come in, and let's be that obnoxious friend in the bleachers when they come up out of that water. Would you do that? Let's go for it today.
Can we just keep it going for those that got baptized? Oh, so cool. I mean, these days are the ultimate reminders of why we do what we do, right? It, it, not only are we getting a front row seat and watching lives being changed, but it's so missional that we are a safe place so people can find and follow Jesus. And here's the deal, all right? We are a safe place. We set a safe environment where people explore and they wrestle. Is this, is this somebody who I want to be the leader of my life? What is this gonna look like? And the, you know, it, it's a safe area to do that. And then as soon as you step out to start following Jesus, it is anything but safe. Here's what I know. When you start following Jesus, he's, he's gonna challenge a lot of things. He's gonna challenge the way you look at money. He's gonna challenge relationships. He's gonna challenge how you handle conflict. He's gonna challenge, I don't know, vulnerability. <laughs> He's gonna challenge so many areas of your life and it's gonna be hard, right? It, it's, so, it's so funny, right? Because uh, Jerry's talking about Jesus when he got baptized and then what? Led out to the wilderness. I promise you, there's so many people who are starting the beginning of their faith journey and it is gonna be hard. And they're gonna experience things that they never thought they'd go through and they, they don't even know how to handle it. One, you probably couldn't handle it alone, um, but he won't fail us. He never does. And, and he has a firm foundation they're building their life on. And as a community of people, if you know anybody that got baptized, you, you got a relationship with them, please be a voice of encouragement to them because uh, it is a journey ahead. And we do this thing together. We don't do it alone, all right? And so here's what I do. I, I wanna let you have a seat. And while you have a seat, I, I know for, we, we gotta see so many people take next steps in the tank today, but I know for all of us, we have a next step. Okay, it may, not, uh, it may not be this, but uh, we've got these connection cards and I challenge every single one of us to fill this out. I know I fill this out weekly and it just helps remind me of what is that next step that I need to take. Okay, and so on this, you can just write down a prayer request. You can write down, um, you know, maybe a next step. I know for me, one of the things Jeremy said uh, that I don't love, but I know it's my next step. Okay, is God cannot heal what I won't reveal. And uh, I don't... I don't love it, but I know it is. I know it is for me, that's my next step. I know there's some other boxes on here that might be um, a next step for you. And I encourage every one of us, okay, let's fill this out. We wanna partner with you, we wanna pray with you. We want to resource you on how, whatever ways that you wanna grow, and this is the way that we do it. So I challenge you, fill this thing out. I also wanna invite our, our ushers forward, it's also our opportunity to give. And I wanna say thank you so much for those that, um, those that are generous. All right, because uh, it's making a big impact. I, I, I uh, am biased, but I think we have some of the most generous people here at North Point. In fact, um, whether it's giving time, talents, resources, what, whatever. Um, but this past week, we had a, a little give back blitz and we got to help at so many different um, areas in our community, through our community partnerships. I, I just wrote down a couple um, of, of the, the places that we were able to help with. And uh, that's all because of your generosity. It was Blue House Project, Ronald McDonald House, Victory Mission, Eden Village, Diaper Bank of the Ozarks, Woodland Heights Community Garden, Foster Adopt and Connect, we packed meals for convoy, DC. There, there, there was even more than that, uh, that, that I know a lot of you were a part of this past weekend. And I just, we have some of the most generous people. So thank you, thank you, thank you for your giving. When you give to, you give through to our community partners. And um, also, if this is your first time here, I do wanna say this. If this is your first time here, one, <laughs> I hope today was helpful for you. I think you picked a good weekend. But two, um, if you mark that first time guest box on this connection card, what we wanna do is make a donation in your honor to one of these community partners. You actually get to choose it. We'll send you an email tomorrow and you get to pick which place we make that donation to in honor of you. And so I think that's pretty cool. Just by showing up today, you know you made a difference in somebody's life. So ushers, we can go and pass those buckets. We can drop our cards or giving in those buckets. And while we do that, I've got two things, just two things, that's it. I'm not gonna hold you very long. Okay, just two things that I wanna talk about. One is next weekend. Mothers, you know what's next weekend? I'm just curious, I, I don't know. I, if, you're, you know, if your kids don't know, remind them, okay? Or husbands, all right, however, you know. So uh, next weekend, Mother's Day weekend, a special weekend uh, for a couple different reasons. One, Mother's Day, come on. Two, we are gonna be having our, uh, our child dedications next weekend. So really what child dedications are, we actually joke, it's like more for um, the family than the kid, okay? But, but here's what it's saying. It's saying, hey, as for me and my household, right, we, we're gonna serve the Lord. Or we're gonna, we wanna raise this kiddo in a God-honoring house and um, we need support, we need help to be able to do that. We need prayers to be able to do that. I know we, um, 
and dedicated my two kids uh, the last round. And so um, if that's something that you're like, hey, that we want that, uh, on our app, you can just sign up and we'll get you ready for next week. And uh, we'll, we'll have, we got a gift for you and a couple of good things. It, it's a great weekend. Uh, two, the other thing I wanna talk about was student camp. So if you've got any students, sixth to 12th grade are gonna be going into sixth grade, this is gonna be awesome. So it's this summer and uh, 19th through the 22nd. If you're interested at all, again, you sign up on that app. Um, it's gonna be here uh, around the Springfield area, so we're not traveling too far, but I think your, uh, your students are gonna walk away with tons of new friends and, and honestly, a better relationship with Jesus, which I think is gonna be pretty cool. Uh, oh, and we got a student section over here. Did I not even mention student section? Oh, I don't know. Okay, all right, students are excited about student camp. I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad. All right, but you can get signed up on the app, all, all the great stuff. But uh, one, I, I hope today was helpful for you. I wanna invite you to stand. We love hanging out with you and we will see you next week.